Hello, I'm Lauren Adams, uh, IFBB Pro, here with Dr. Capizzi today at Capizzi MD. Um, we're going to be talking about breast implant surgery, and that's going to be our first topic we're going to be discussing. Um, again, I'm Lauren. And I'm Peter Capizzi. I guess I'm the plastic surgeon. You know, I'm <laughs> here. Yeah, so we have a couple questions uh, for him. We're going to just talk about some common topics that have been coming up um, regarding plastic surgery um, or breast augmentation surgery. And then I got a few questions from you guys, uh, the viewers, or my little story watchers today on Instagram uh, that we're going to be covering. So the first thing I wanted to address with you is just let's talk about breast implant illness. That's a big, huge thing that a lot of people have been asking me about. Um, we, we'll do a later topic or a later uh, video on this. It's a little bit longer if you want. But for right now, let's just say thoughts on that. Is it real? Is it not? Is there any proof? Kind of just discuss that a little bit and give everyone a little bit of advice about that. Well, that's the uh, million dollar question. Isn't it? I think so. I think uh, breast implant illness, you know, I'm a doctor, so I'm a doctor first. If someone's not feeling good about something, then we want to take care of that. And that's, I think, part of, hey, breast implant illness plays into that. Uh, it's a woman's choice. Uh, we're here, we're very much a proponent of that. They want to have their implants out. We will remove implants. The question is, you know, how do these symptoms develop? Uh, no one knows. No one has that study. Uh, there is actually an ongoing uh, study that's uh, being developed with the Plastic Surgery Society uh, with regards to breast implant illness. Um, I certainly have seen patients that are concerned about their implants. Uh, we've recently uh, started using and utilizing a ultrasound within our practice to ultrasound these implants to say, hey, you know, I think they're okay. It just is another added layer of a physical exam. Um, and removed implants. And a lot of times they'll remove implants and then we'll use fat grafting for volume. But again, I wish I could say to you, yes, is it real? It's real that uh, women are concerned about this. Um, we're waiting for some of the answers. Right, no, that's a great, great answer to that question. And uh, I didn't even know you could like, you know, kind of do a, a scan on them to see if they're doing okay, if they're toxic or not. Is that kind of what you're saying? Well, I can do a scan on them and get an idea of, is there a fluid collection around oh, okay. them? Um, do they appear intact? Those are the kind of questions cool. we're looking at. So guys, if you feel something kind of weird, we can check into it. Um, one of the questions I got also is, um, Let's just go to the basics. How long after you know getting the breast implants do you have to wait to go back in the gym? So I mean, this could, this could go to over the muscle, under the muscle. How long? How long do we have to wait to get back to pumping iron or doing even just a little bit of cardio? Okay, I love this question because most of the people that have never met me before and I tell them the answer to this don't believe me um, Can't because wait. I'll tell them forty eight hours. So what? 48 hours. I was dipped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that doesn't mean you're going to go out and do, do a burpee or do your no. toughest workout or be pumping iron. But you can do spin. You can do elliptical. You can, well, certainly walk uh, to go to do elliptical. But you can get back in the gym and start that. I don't mind general active range of motion. Now, to get back, like, to do running, get back to do burpees or mm -hmm. box jumps, those types of activities will take you about three or four weeks to get back. Yoga, two weeks you can start. What about like over the head stuff, like shoulder press or anything with the upper body, like bicep curls, anything like I that? I don't mind bicep curls. Shoulder press because you're gonna be stretching out Bring your the back, whole torso. Bring you know, pull downs kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, that's probably gonna be about three or four weeks. Okay, see, not that long guys. Um, so don't be afraid of it. I took a lot longer than that off, probably because I just wanted to also, and, but that's okay. <laughs> and it doesn't matter, above the muscle or below the muscle. Oh yeah. So I don't discern between the two. Okay, so what you're saying is there isn't really necessarily, in your experience, a difference in healing time with over or under? That's correct. I get asked that a lot too. Yeah, oh no, and, and patients ask me that. And they, you know, they say, hey, I want to have less recovery. I said, really, how much quicker can the recovery be if it's 48 hours to get you back and on, on ibuprofen and get you back into the gym or yeah. begin working out? Good answer. And then you can get some blood flowing. I'm sure that can actually help with healing. Too. Yeah, people, you know, are concerned about, hey, don't do it too hard. Don't do spin too hard. Don't do, and I agree with that, but um, stress, some stress is good for healing. Yeah, and because it forces the body to start recovering, right? That's correct. Right. So uh, leading into that, what are top, the, one of the questions I got uh, was, what are the top three things that help patients recover faster slash better? Top three things? Mm -hmm. One expectation and have a healthy person. So if they're already engaged in their activity of being healthy, that's easy. 
The next is get them off any kind of narcotics. So I, I tell patients, the next day you can drive, you'll be taking ibuprofen. Right. So, and then I think, honestly, it's the technique of the, how your implant is placed. Mm -hmm. And you know there are usually three approaches, the underarm, the areola, that's oh, the right. pigmented area, or the crease. The crease, for me, is the easiest, and it's the easiest on, on the person. When you say crease, you mean underneath? Yeah, underneath. Okay. That's underneath. what I have. Okay. That's right. All right, so is there a benefit to either one of those, as far as like healing time? Uh, definitely, because if, let's say, the further you get away, like let's say it was up here in the mm -hmm. underarm area, you don't have to have a tunnel up here to put your implant in. Mm -hmm. You just go and put it and place it where it needs to be. So you only make it the size of the actual implant. Right. You're not making a big pocket for a little implant. Right, okay, that makes sense. So just ask your doctor about those um, insertion points, um, guys. All right, so the other question that we got was, does muscle buildup behind the implant cause discomfort or frequent checkups to get it adjusted? So I'm not exactly sure what they're asking. Like maybe if you build more muscle behind the implant, does that cause discomfort? Is there anything you can do? Like as you say, for example, if you're trying to grow your chest, um, that's not really something that I'm actively doing, but some bodybuilders that are, you know, might be doing sure. that. So what's the protocol there? Would you, they need to reconsider like um, maybe getting them redone in the future? How does that work? Not a, not in my experience. And I've had, I definitely had many people who are bodybuilders who, you know, when they, they're going into competition or when they're off competition, we don't change, we don't manipulate the implant. I actually tell them there are a lot of uh, massage recommended in our industry. I do not make, recommend massage. And okay. it's because I don't want them to push their implant around. Uh, we want them to stay in position where I place the implant. But you can definitely work your chest out. You don't have, it's not going to cause any trouble with your implant. Okay, that is something else that I was about to say just for my own question. Um, I've had different trainers, coaches that I work with or just friends with or whatever um, over time tell me that if you get implants, do not do chest anymore. Or if you do chest, do really light work. Um, thoughts on that? I think it's all the art of medicine. It's what they're comfortable with. I don't inhibit you in any way. If you want to skydive, you want to scuba dive, <laughs> you want to jump out of an airplane, you want to sure. be a bodybuilder, yeah. go to it. Is it going to mess them up? No, it won't mess them yeah. up. Now, the question there, the discussion is above or below the muscle. So mm -hmm. if I know that you're going to be a heavy bodybuilder, I'm going to probably encourage you, well, we'll talk about, hey, putting it on top of the muscle and what, to, what it's going to look like on top of the muscle. Because when they cut their fat, it's going to look mm -hmm. like skin on the implant. So you'll see the implant more. So that's why I went under the muscle with mine, because um, I know when I get really lean, I just didn't want it to look like skin, implant, and then chest muscle, or you know, sternum. I wanted it to be a little bit more natural looking um, right. as much as I could. Um, and that's the main reason I did it, is because I had nothing whenever I cut down, so I wanted to get um, my surgery. But uh, some people think that there's great benefits to getting over or under. Like, what are, what are some of the differentiators and why you'd recommend that? Sure. So a uh, big differentiator, an easy one would be if someone does have a broad pectoralis, broad muscle, and they are a bodybuilder, most often we'll put it on top of the muscle because they're not going to, they're, they're not going to want to see the animation mm -hmm. uh, when they're one, working out, or two, when they're showing. Um, same thing, that discussion would occur with, you know, the IFBB group um, and very active athletic people. It's the animation versus what it appears like. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, the people that are really healthy, they don't have a lot of tissue thickness. Mm -hmm. So we end up going underneath the muscle because they say, you know what, in the end, yeah, maybe they're only doing this for the short time of their life. So you know what, I don't want to see my implant all the time. Right. Um, but I'd rather, hey, when I'm ready, I can, I can still show, but I'll tolerate a little bit of animation if I have it because it's not a guarantee. Right. Right. So it probably has to do a little bit with how much tissue is there to begin with on the outside. Oh, totally. Like breast tissue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So depending on what you work with beforehand, guys, that's what I would say. And it, honestly, it's a discussion. It is yeah. a discussion with that person saying, hey, what are you trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. and this is where we are. This is where you want to go. And I can tell you how to get there. Awesome. So as far as uh, recovery goes, um, some of the other things that you'd say for um, the top three things, I guess, like stretching, is there resting, like anything we, like that? So we give, um, well, no, as far as uh, I have you work out until, right until they get 
the get-go. So if you're scheduled for a procedure, you don't have to stop working out. Nice. Continue work out, to work out. We use Arnica Montana a lot. So Arnica is an herb. Um, mm. We do believe it helps with achiness. Certainly, if, uh, I've never heard of that. Uh, bruising and it's all in our it's on our pre-op kit. Oh, that's gel. Everybody gets it. It can be gel too. It I've seen that. It can be gel Arnica and it can gel. be by yeah. mouth. Okay. And we typically give the one by mouth, but we do have both. I've seen that. Um, we don't recommend a, a bra like you're not going to be bound up. So we let you be free and easy, and we start general active range of motion in the recovery area. Okay. So we don't keep you like oh you can't raise your arms above your shoulders. Mm. There's a lot of that. Yeah, there is. And you try doing that for two days, and you'll be stiff. Right. So as far as sleeping, um, that's one question I got was how, what's the best way to sleep the year after? I've had some people tell me before, you need to wear a really tight sports bra for a year while you sleep. Some people say you need to have it wrapped up for six months. Some people say nothing. So what is the answer? <laughs> well, for me, the answer is I'm a minimalist. So Love the answer it. is whatever you want to wear is ever nothing's comfortable. Gonna... Nothing's going to support. Right. Bras didn't stop your breasts from dropping. Right. <laughs> you know, physics will win out. Gravity. Yeah, gravity wins. Okay. Um, so, I tell people whatever you're comfortable with. Most often, it's not. They don't. They're definitely not need to be wrapped up. You know. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Um, and I guess like we'll we'll keep you forever. So the last thing I guess I would say like recommend would probably be or the thing I would ask you is for someone who's a little bit on the younger side. Would what would you recommend if they came to you maybe like early twenties, like maybe late teens? considering breast, breast augmentation, would you say that's something you'd want to advise them to think about a little bit longer, something you'd encourage, just do it because, you know, you're going to get paid no matter, like, what is the advice for people, <laughs> you know, that, because I have a lot of girls if, that are yeah. like, like literally in college, you know, going, or even going into college who have asked sure. me about it and like, you know, everybody's mm -hmm. different. I know when I was 17, I looked like I was 14, so, or 12. So I just mean, you know, it's kind of different for everyone. Um, what would be some like advice? If you have any for that well the advice really is you know I take it as an individual mm -hmm. and obviously if they're young below the age of 18 they're with their parents or their mm -hmm. parents you know, and will be in this discussion um, most often it's waiting and you know thinking about it especially with regards to breast development however I certainly have placed implants that are silicone gel mm -hmm. in women that have ac breast asymmetry mm -hmm. and they're significant enough that they're withdrawn for it. It bothers them. It affects their activities of daily right. life. Right, and clothes. And clothes. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then you know this is not a complicated procedure. It's about you know improving that person's life and out and physical being and you know psychosocial being. So totally, I'm a fan, and that's why I'm here today and partnering with them um, for some things that we're going to be talking about in the future as far as cosmetic enhancements, procedures, things like that. Anything that's gonna make you feel better and make you be happier all day, I'm all for it. Do whatever you want. You have one life, so that's why I say if it's gonna help you be more confident, do it. Um, as far as I guess like any information you'd want to give about your offerings or what mm -hmm. differenti differentiates you guys, you know the different types of implants, whatever you want to say like about uh, Capesium D and your experience there, I'd lo we'd love to hear that too. Wow, uh, a freebie. No, yeah, for you. Go ahead. <laughs> this is your time. Um, I think what differentiates us is, uh, I've, now I can say I've been here in Charlotte for a long time, but been in here for some time. Uh, definitely the first uh, fellowship trained breast, cosmetic breast surgeon in town that's opened his own Boom. practice. There you go. So, and maintain clinical, uh, being involved in clinical studies with the pre market analysis, with the FDA, with with these implants mm -hmm. um, until now. We're in the, I'm in the largest uh, clinical study in our specialty for capsular contracture with silicone gel implants. Uh, we definitely have the most experience with the gummy bear implant in North Carolina. Uh, we're approaching over 4,500 of those. Nice. Um, it's, so it's just being involved from the Staying implant in itself. connected. And obviously treating patients and, you know, looking at our data um, with a, at least a cautious eye, you know, and trying to, you know, improve. Mm -hmm. not just, we're not better. here just selling these things. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I guess we can ask one more question because we have a little bit of time. Uh, what, uh, is there a favorite kind that you would recommend that you see or is it really just kind of depends on 
the person like favorite implant. Yeah, favorite type of implant because I know I've had friends say, "Do you have a gummy bear? Do you have silicone? Do you have saline? You know, what's the best?" Like, I, I don't know. I kind of just went with my instincts and picked one. Went back when I did mine, um, and earlier this year. Mm -hmm. But for you, I guess, is there a benefit to any of them over another, or what's the difference? Yeah, there, there? is. There are definitely differences. And my favorite is the Sientra. Uh, I like the high profile Sientra mm -hmm. implants. The uh, definitely the these implants are, are great and I use them all the time. Okay. Yeah. So for anyone who's asked me about a gummy bear before, what's right. the what's the like what's selling the factor there or what's the okay what's the interest the there? Okay, so gummy bear, first of all, refers to the latest generation that was approved in two thousand thirteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's called the highly cohesive gel, which means if I cut this, it's not gonna pour out onto the floor like it's a little bit firmer. It is. Okay. Um, but it's softer than okay. the last generation oh, and okay. it's stronger uh -huh. and it has the least amount of risk for deflation and then these implants have a lifetime warranty for deflation so it's the first implant that came out with that the other implants never had that prior to 2013 they didn't have a lifetime warranty for anything they had a 10-year warranty wow. and then about five years before they only had a five-year warranty so this is the one that's what i have pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> we have another episode coming about that. You we're going we're to look into that. Yeah, we're going to look into it, uh, but yeah. you get a card uh, that shows what kind of implants you have with the serial number on it and everything like that, which we will take a look at that at another time. But is there anything else you want to add for this no, session? No, I am so excited to be with you, Lauren. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you. I'm excited to be with you. Um, hopefully, we can do some other stuff to me later. But right. for now, uh, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. And thanks for Olivia behind the camera. And uh, we can yeah. high five. Oh, uh, <laughs> high five. Yeah.